with, you know, some of the things I deal with and, and like my personality disorder and stuff, I, I really want to be able to be, uh, use whatever platform I have to just be super open about that and talk about it because I think it's, it's cool. Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in field Kate Offenser. How are you doing today? Doing great, man. Thanks so much for having me. How about yourself? I'm pretty good. It's a Friday. It's not too many bad Fridays in life. They're usually good. And uh, I'm doing pretty well. Super stoked to talk about music with you. First and foremost, it's been such a crazy time in the world. I hope you're well. All your peeps and collaborators and family and friends are okay. Because, you know, I don't, you know, we do so many of these things and I don't want to lose that human part and not check in with people because it's just tough. Sure. No, hang, hanging in there, man. Every, just getting through the days, right? Everyone is safe and, and healthy, though, to my knowledge. So, All right. There we go. And then uh, you have a brand new single coming out that I want to talk all about. I have gotten to hear it. It is not out yet as of this interview, but it's about to be. And sure. uh, it's so killer, man. Uh, Joseph Courtney. And I need to ask all the things about this track. Let's let's hear about this. Go track. for it. Yeah. So Joseph Courtney, actually, um, you know, we have this uh, have this upcoming record and there are a hand they're all new songs except for maybe one or two that are from like you know our our big history backlog um and joe's Courtney is actually i think the first song that cameron and i wrote together is our drummer kind of before fencer was even named fencer it was just us kind of messing around learning learning each other and learning how to song right and so joe's Courtney is a song we love playing it live we've been playing it for years and it's very much evolved um it just never kind of landed on on a release it wasn't on the ep and we've never put it out um otherwise and so as we were coming up with the track list for this record we were kind of going through and and seeing what we wanted to do and wanted to pick maybe a couple songs that were were a bit uh older for some old school fencer fans and joseph courtney is one of those ones that's just always stuck around so we kind of rewrote it from the ground up and gave it a more um modern approach of of where we are now right and so Joseph Courtney is basically um, the idea of it. It's it, the song is an introductory, uh, an introduction to this character. So um, it's kind of like an alter ego of mine. I mean, Joseph Courtney, the uh, I, I don't go by the name, but the idea is just like, especially back in the day, um, I wasn't necessarily, you know, I'm the front man of this rock band, but I didn't feel like I was ready to play that part. So I kind of came up with this persona of a person who um, just craves that attention and is able to just control the crowd and really um, embody and, and kind of fix a lot of the insecurities I was dealing with. So it's just this kind of uh, hyper idolized, you know, mythical being that um, I kind of got really obsessed with and, and liked to kind of pretend to be and adopt um, that kind of idea. Dig it. Everybody at heart makes art but not everybody's comfortable with the tropes of the rock band you know what is a standard rock band experience and what are we trying to project to people right at, at heart people make music you start with yourself and your your sure. collective of people you relate to and you know i i've done that journey myself so i totally respect that that's really cool and thanks for sharing um yeah, of course. you know i you have had, personally had a really circuitous story about getting into the arts and music if you want to share a little five minute origin story i'm sure you're tired of talking about some of this stuff, <laughs> but i think it's interesting inherently for our fans that may not know you or know the band yet yeah definitely so um i was an actor for like a decade i started when i was six and did it till till like middle of high school um that was like my whole life i didn't really know anything else and as people do they kind of you know, eventually uh, change. And I loved acting. I still think it's really cool, but I just kind of found other interests and stuff. Was always super into music. I mean, the most like cliche thing is like my, oh, my dad got me into music when I was young and would always play me shit and stuff like that. Basically, I, I started like finding bands that I liked myself, uh, even when I was like really young, like nine, 10, 11. Um, and when I got into high school, as I started to kind of lose interest in acting a little bit, I wanted to get more into that. I mean, I've been singing my whole life. I did musical theater growing up and stuff. And I, I kind of was always messing around with songwriting. I just didn't really know anything about, 
like I didn't know how to play any instruments and I didn't really know anything about music other than what I listened to and being able to sing. So I was always trying to like start bands. I always thought that would be such a cool thing, um, but it just like never really came together. And then after I finished high school, I was kind of like, all right, well, what do I want to do now? Because I was acting and then I wanted to be a director for a bit. And then I kind of just fell out of love with all of that. And um, I think I ultimately started a band with my friend and it was like my first real project. Um, and we wrote a handful of songs and that, you know, played its course and I was out of that. And then I didn't really know much. Um, I had started learning bass when I was like 14. So I played bass, I could sing, and I didn't know any musicians. So I went on this like band finding website to find people. And I got hit up by the manager of this pop punk band. And he wanted me to audition as the bass player. So I did. And uh, ultimately, I mean, I wanted to sing, but we had a different singer in the band. And Cameron, our drummer, was the drummer of that band. So we were doing that for a little bit. And he and I kind of started to started to bond and have, have more of a connection together. We would hang out privately and, and write songs. That's where Joseph Courtney came from and a bunch of other stuff. I'd go to his house at like 9, 10 p.m. And we'd sit there, write and record a song in like one session till like, I remember we'd do it in my car and I'd be leaving at like 6 a.m. or something. So that was, uh, it was really cool. And we kind of, we called it side project, I think. Um, and uh, ultimately we decided we liked that more than what we were in and I wanted to sing. And uh, we, we started our own thing and we started trying to try people out, look for members, stuff like that. Um, I just started learning guitar because it made a lot of sense at the time. We needed a guitar player. And so I was like, I'll just figure it out. And so I kind of did. And we were just writing and playing as much as we can. And uh, when we were in between members, because we couldn't find the right fit. Cameron's brother, Scott, started filling in because he played bass. And um, we just wanted to keep going. We didn't want to have any breaks and and what we were doing. And uh, eventually, I think sometime in like early February 2017, um, we just, uh, I remember looking over at the guys and I was like, why don't we just do this? It's working. And um, we did, and we came up with the name Fencer. And so that is uh, that. Ever since then, we've just, uh, we've just done this and learned each other and wrote a shit ton of songs. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Uh, I am also a refugee of musical theater as a kid. So I think it does provide a great training ground for being a rock singer. Uh, Definitely. I'll, I'll die on that hill, actually. And I think there's, <laughs> there's a, I was always trying to make the correlation between musical theater and rock and other forms of music and, you know, more stuffy people would be like, no way, musical theater. <laughs> like, oh, I think it's great. I love, I love musical theater. And I think it has a huge, huge influence on how I sing and how even a lot of our songwriting, but the, definitely the theatricality and the vibrato and kind of um, the way I emphasize certain, you know, certain things. It's, um, it's very much based on that background. So right on. Do you have a favorite musical of all time? Now I have to know. Oh, gosh, off the top of my head. Um, I mean, more classic musicals, I would say I love Annie and Oliver, uh, two big ones, but those are generic answers. More modern stuff, I think, um, I think is also somewhat of a generic answer, but I love Heather. Um, that musical that's um, blown up in the last, like, I don't know, probably, you know, six, seven years or so. I think it's a really good one. Yeah, some of these uh, more modern musicals are finally finding their footing. It's interesting yeah. how, you know, there's like new jazz music, but there's no new symphonies. And there's new, finally new musicals. And there was like a, you know, none. It was like a Lion right. King. <laughs> and then <laughs> suddenly now there's a lot of modern musicals, whether they have a source that's older uh, I want to see the almost famous musical when it does the national tour. They just opened in New cool. York. I'm very excited. I love that movie. It's all happening. Anybody who watches my stuff knows, you know, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's super cool. That Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I'm sure we all did Annie as a kid. I'm sure we all did, you know, we, there's all the West Side Story stuff, at least the rehearsals and audition songs and stuff. But I do think it's of course. The, the rigor of being a musical theater artist helps with rock there's no question it strengthens you it definitely prepares you for a lot of ups and downs and discipline and stuff so yeah man your voice is awesome i have to say you got a voice beyond your your age already <laughs> thank and, you um, appreciate it yeah man i i love the vibe the band puts down and i i'm a man, just a few things that i have heard got me super stoked 
You guys are working on a full length record for next year. I believe you have not announced yet, but that's, you know, it's out there. It I think right. it'll, it'll, I'm pretty sure. I mean, we're announcing it Tuesday when the song oh. comes out. So it'll, it'll be announced by the time this airs. And I have is. in my notes from Edder that I'm allowed to talk about the album. So <laughs> shout out to the PR firm who handles everything. That's what we do. Yes. Uh, you make the art, they make, they take care of the rest. That's what's up. Absolutely. And yeah. So that's exciting. And then I imagine you guys are going to do more than just local shows and regional touring at some point. Absolutely. I mean, we did a, we did a few nationwide tours in 2019 before COVID hit everything. I mean, we did a lot of Midwest and East coast. Um, the idea is definitely to get back out there. So we're working on nothing to announce right now, but working on a lot of background and um, stay tuned, I guess is what you say. So, <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. You don't want to reveal too much. Uh, you know, just in as a in a general sense, how you know does the band you write all the time? Uh, I think I was going to ask just you personally. Do you write all the time, whether it's songs or lyrics or melodies, or do you just kind of wait until the band is together? Yeah, no, I'm. I, I would say I write all the time. Um, I write all the lyrics, and uh, we generally it'll be either Cameron and I uh, will bring in some kind of idea and kind of flesh it out between the three of us. And there's definitely, I mean, involvement between everyone. I mean, the writing credits on the album, we, we're splitting them all equally. Um, so the whole thing written by Fencer, which we're really proud of. Basically, uh, yeah, I do write all the time, constantly coming up with ideas, but I do kind of go through bursts of writing a ton for many months at a time. And then I, even lately, I, I haven't been doing it very much, it's just been kind of a, a dry spell. And sometimes I try and push myself through that, but I also kind of just, allow it i mean i don't know i like not writing sometimes i know there's something to be said about the uh work ethic of forcing yourself through it and really pushing yourself when you don't feel like it and um that kind of thing um and you can do that but i generally like when i feel the motivation naturally i mean i have a lot of motivation issues in general and so i think the best stuff kind of comes when I allow it to, and usually it's almost like a, a bipolar type thing of it'll happen for a long period of time and then it won't happen for a period of time. And so, you know, when it does happen, it, it kind of goes off of it. And, um, and that is helpful for, uh, you know, just being able to get a, a lot of new music done in that time frame. And then also I can depend on, um, I mean, Cameron brings in a lot of cool riffs and stuff and often they inspire me and bring out a song in, in that sense. And so, I can always uh, depend on that when I'm struggling to come up with something. So right on, I, you know, I can relate to uh, moods and swings and things. Um, you know, life is a dumpster fire within a dumpster fire sometimes. And we've all <laughs> absolutely you've just all still going through kind of a global psychotic break, followed by a lot of ennui to use a lot of $10 words on a Friday after three coffees. So you'll forgive me. But, you know, you've been very open talking about, you know, just, you know, it's important to focus on mental health. It uh, pro figures prominently in your lyrics. You talked earlier about anxiety and stuff. No stranger to that myself and probably yeah. all our want of viewers. So, you know, it's good that you are comfortable having a healthy dialogue about this because honestly, my generation of dudes, we were not supposed to talk about our feelings. And yeah. you were like, what kind of freak is this guy? That he's always talking about his feelings. You were considered like, oh, he's trouble. So now we're in a, at least there's kind of an open space, you know, obviously it varies from person to person, no judgments if people can't come, you know, come forward with their feelings, but it's good that you can, it's important, not just that you have a musical outlet to do it, but that you've been pretty, pretty open and open book about this stuff. Yeah, definitely. And I, I want to continue that trend. I mean, uh, mental health is a massive part of my life. I have a personality disorder and serious depression, anxiety. It's been the last, like I'm 25 now in my whole 20s so far. I've just been kind of learning about that, figuring all these things out about myself and trying to uh, do everything I can to manage them, at least get it under control early on so that ideally I can be in a better place than uh, other people who, who didn't prioritize it as, as much early on. And I, I do think um, I'm lucky to be in a generation where the stigma around it is, I mean, it's not gone, but it's definitely a lot less than it was. And I think it's something that a lot more people kind of are open to nowadays. And it's super, like, it's objectively super important. So, you know, and I, I, I want to, especially with, um, with, you know, some of the things I deal with and, and like my personality disorder and stuff, I, I really want to be able to be, uh, use whatever platform I have to just be super open about that and talk about it because I think it's, it's cool. 
it's beyond cool. And I also wish that I had a nickel for every time someone said, just snap out of it. Stop being depressed. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, oh man, I had like a two day panic attack. Why does that happen to you? I don't know. I do know. I don't, I also don't know. I can't make it not happen. It just happens. So I'm a life coach as well as of recently. So I've been trying to kind of share my techniques and, and thought, thought mentalities and things like that, that I've learned with, um, with like teens and stuff like that. So that's, Oh, that's amazing. I wish I had somebody like that in my teens. So, so that's really cool to hear, man. I appreciate that. Uh, just as we wind this down, you know, we're getting to the end of the year and it's end of year list time. And I always like to ask artists, you know, what, what were you listening to? What was on your stay list for the year? What albums have stayed with you that Put came me on the spot? Year? Let me, oh, yeah. <laughs> you can look it up. That's totally cool. Quick. Yeah. This year specifically. Um, I think I love a band called the happy fits. They put out a new record this year super into that uh i've been very much you know the thing i've been listening to very recently is the uh this is not anything new but the um the new mix of uh well it is new but not, it's the uh, the new mix of um revolver by the beatles um that just came out the super deluxe and um that's been really fun like that a lot i know i'm probably forgetting all sorts of very important ones but I'm There's trying no judgment here. My, it's just kind of go a, through my stuff right now. Yeah, um, what, on my really Spotify. Funny. What have I been bumping? I don't yeah. know. I listen to I I I gravitate to a lot of albums and will just sit there and listen to them over and over and over for years on end. So a lot of it ends up being stuff like that. I checked out Turnstile recently. They've been kind of blowing up. Pretty cool. I get it. I get it. I get why why everyone's flipping about it. Gosh, I'm trying to think 2022. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, being very lame on that. Oh, you know what's a, a really great one? Um, one of my favorite bands was a band called Deal Casino um, out of Asbury Park, New Jersey. And they um, we had toured with them a bit in 2019. They were great guys, but um, had never really hit it off. And they've made uh, they, they've made one of my favorite albums of all time. They're an incredible band. And I was very thankful to be able to watch them play live so many times. Um, they ultimately, I think, broke up in like early 2020. Uh, the singer, his name is Joe P. He went and started his own solo career. And I think he hit it off on TikTok really hard and blew up. And I, I believe he's signed to Atlantic now. And he put out um, a record this year, uh, I think like his first big one with a major label. It's fantastic. It's called French Blonde. And it actually has a, a couple of a uh, couple of tune, old Deal Casino tunes that maybe now can be introduced to a, a wider audience that he did his own little spin on. So love that. French Blonde by Joe P. If you're interested. I'm definitely interested, and I know the Happy Fits, and uh, yeah, and uh, Turnstile. Also out of Asbury Park. Also weirdly out of the boss's hometown. In my youth, attended many, many times at Asbury Park at the Stone Pony, still there somehow. And okay, um, cool. Not sure how, but how. And uh, yeah, Beatles, still very cool. Uh, I'm still very pumped up about that documentary last year, and I'm looking forward to yep. the full-length Let It Be movie someday, whenever Peter Jackson stops doing it. It's done when I'm done. All right, bro. Hobbits. You know. I'm waiting for, so they keep doing all the new mixes. I'm waiting for the Magical Mystery Tour remix. That That's would one be of my sick. favorite records by them. So. I had the vinyl growing up. I love that one. Abbey Road is probably my favorite Beatles anything. Just that's sure. My, I love that by accident. Hey, we have like 10 half finished songs. Let's string them together into like a mishmash and it yep. somehow works. So I love that record still. But yeah, you know what I've like, learned about like, listening to Revolver though now hmm. with this new mix? Everyone values that record so highly. Don't think it's one of the best ones. I think hmm. they have so much better material personally. But you know, have Paul McCartney come after me. Oh, I he might. He's, <laughs> or, he's ornery. Glad he's still around doing his thing. Um, I always had Rubber Soul a little ahead of Revolver, but I understand like Revolvers when they really became like their own hard rock band, which they weren't. That's what not people much talk of. about, yeah. And the bubblegum yeah. stuff is, you know, great songs, but like I wouldn't sit and listen to Love Me Do today. Um, <laughs> if it came on, I wouldn't get mad at it, but like I'm not going to go reach for it as opposed to maybe the latest. White one. album. White, white album. Oh, white album. Yeah, Eternal. So right? weird. So it's, weird. Yeah, they, what it was a weird like, record. Yeah, they all, yeah, that, by then they were like, we're writing by ourselves. Forget you. Yeah. <laughs> the partnership is over. But uh, yeah. yeah, what a fun, what a fun, uh, you know, a fun little exercise here. And uh, hey, Turnstile's new song is in a Taco Bell ad. So that's the goal, man. I wish I had a song in a Taco Bell ad. Yeah, definitely. For and they're going to open for Blink all next year, which is great here in America. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 
super fun about the very blink. cool you know are you a blink are you a pop punk guy do you like are you excited about blink no i mean i have a bit of history with pop punk i mean i was in that band with cameron that's how we met and i uh when i was really getting into music i mean some 41 is my favorite band for years but i always gravitated more towards their their heavier stuff and um their album screaming bloody murder still i think is fantastic and no one has like ever listened to that album and it's like not very pop punk it's pretty dark and heavy um i loved green day i mean i you know 21st century breakdown still one of my favorite records so i guess that all classifies under pop punk but not no, blink was never really my thing uh it's cool they're back i think the having tom back is a is a nice big like a. Uh, I don't know. Just it's a it's a nice big story in in rock music and modern music and stuff. But it is interesting how that pop punk resurgence has been happening lately. So. Right, right. And there's and there's so much more to go. Hey, uh, Field. So nice to meet you. So cool to hear your story. I am so pumped for this single and the announcement of your album. I hope we'll catch up when the album is closer to coming out and chat again and talk about the full album once I get to hear it. And uh, just really excited for you and the band. And I wish you the best of luck with Fencer, man. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. It was a really good time. Thanks for having me.